after a man gets recruited by an agency that supervises alien activity on Earth, maintaining peace among the galaxies starts becoming a little more complicated than expected. And that's why today in Flick Summary, Man in Black. This flick opens all the way over at the United States border, where a border patrol stops a vehicle full of men attempting to cross over to America. While the patrol prepares to take the whole car into custody, Agent K, one of our leading men, interrupts the arrest, asserting that he's part of a hidden agency that takes care of this sort of matter. You see, one of the men that was trying to cross did not speak a word of Spanish, and he was claiming to be from Mexico. Strange, right? Not to Agent K. Upon realizing the man can't speak the language of his apparent home country, he accidentally gives himself away to the agent, revealing that he's not actually from Mexico or from Earth at all. Our boy here is from a whole different planet. Mikey, when they let you out of jail? Let's start go. Well, guess they go way back, huh? Agent K basically vaporizes the alien while the border patrol watches in shock, unaware that aliens were casually visiting Earth. In order to avoid a panic, Agent K beams a red flashy thing into the patrol's eyes, instantly erasing the memory of what they just witnessed. Phew, that was close. That was close. We then cut to Will Smith, also known as James Edwards, an NYPD officer who is chasing after a criminal who runs at insane speeds, can crawl along walls, and performs insanely high jumps. And no, he's not Spider Man. Similar abilities, though. When Edwards catches up to him, the criminal says some cryptic dialogue about someone coming and someone who is out to kill him, apparently. Don't be frightened, though. I'm sure his cryptic messages don't mean a thing. You don't understand. Your world's gonna end. Uh, guess not. Now let's head on over to a farm where we meet Edgar, a mean man who only has love for his truck and nothing else, just as he tells his wife that the only thing he has going for himself, a spaceship lands directly on top of it. Don't feel bad for him though, he kind of had it coming. Anyway, Edgar tries to confront the beings in the ship but gets immediately killed by the aliens, who are now wearing his corpse as a suit to try and get by unnoticed by Earthlings. He had it coming. Well, good luck with that. Fake Edgar returns to home to his wife, who immediately notices that something is certainly off, but doesn't do much about it other than abide to his commands of getting sugar water, or whatever that means. We then return to Edwards, who is getting questioned by several agents about what he witnessed and the strange abilities the criminal possessed. Not too long after, Agent K makes an appearance and takes charge of the questionings, asking Edwards about everything he saw that same night as he explains that he is pretty sure that what he saw was out of this world. I'm not saying it's space aliens, right? But it goes without saying it's space aliens! As you can imagine, Agent K deals with this sort of thing a little more frequently than what you expect, so he was familiar with what Edwards described. Agent K takes Edwards to a jewelry store whose clerk is actually selling some weird guns, revealing that he's really an alien arms dealer and selling guns to unlicensed aliens. You sold a reverberating carbonizer with mutate capacity to an unlicensed cephalopoid. Jeeves, you piece of shit. It looked all right to me. Yup, what he said. Agent K explains the entire situation to Edwards and tells him that there are countless aliens roaming around Earth constantly. And while Edwards is shocked, he takes it like a champ. However, Agent K then beams the flashy red thing at Edwards and erases his memory, forgetting the entire encounter with himself and the alien. Before Agent K leaves, he hands Edwards a card with instructions to meet with him the following morning at a specific direction. With nothing else to add, the two part ways. As instructed, Edwards arrives to the meeting place the next morning and finds that it's some sort of recruitment that's been done among other agents. This recruitment will be done with a number of tests, both mental and physical, and the role that they will take on remains a mystery. Edwards takes on everything without much trouble and is even rather creative and observational when it comes to the physical tests. Sounds about right to me. That makes sense to me. 
After speaking with a few other agents involved in the selection process, Agent K insists that Edwards is their go-to man and should be the one that gets the mysterious position. Seeing as no one knows more about the job than Agent K himself, our boy Edwards gets the golden ticket. Not before he raises everyone else's memory about the tests though. Anyway, Agent K once again explains everything to Edwards, the existence of aliens and whatnot with rather fitting metaphors. Did you ever see the movie Casablanca? Same thing, except no Nazis. Oh. He invites Edwards to join the agency and informs him what is expected of him in case he chooses to join them. But you know, it's easy stuff, like identifying aliens under crafty disguises, stop any illegal activity from them and of course maintain peace among the galaxies. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There's one teeny tiny catch though. If he decides to fight alien crime alongside Agent K, he must be stripped away of all his friendships, identity and basically human contact in general. Basically, Will Smith would stop being Will Smith. Edwards then asks Agent K about the agency and wonders why they keep it from people, thinking that they'd be able to handle it. But Agent K has one killer argument that defeats Edwards' position. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals and you know it. Again, sounds about right. Oh, by the way, Edwards only has until sunrise to think it over. Tough decision, huh? Sunrise rolls around and Edwards has made up his mind. He doesn't want the job. Credits roll. Movie's over. It's over. Go home. <laughs> nah, just kidding. He takes the job and gets all the training necessary to finally become a man in black. Yes, that involves getting his identity wiped from the earth and of course the iconic suit. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Go Edwards! Now let's go back to Edgar. Remember him? Well, he's after some guy with a cat. Well, to be more specific, he's actually just after the cat. But that's all you're getting for now. This will help for context later. Okay, now let's head back over to the agency, where Agent K and Edwards are being informed about an unauthorized landing somewhere in upstate New York. They are instructed to monitor whatever is happening over there, but are interrupted when an alien alarm goes off as Edwards prepared to face his very first mission as an alien cop. First time. Our two agents are quick to identify a troublesome alien who has a passenger who is apparently giving birth to another otherworldly creature. For some reason, this entire strange situation led them to think that something had to be happening for an alien to want to give birth on Earth. That makes sense to me. So naturally, they decide to do some digging. In the local newspaper? Well, alright then. Surprisingly, Agent K finds a story of a woman that claims that her husband has died and has been possessed by some sort of alien entity. Sound familiar? As this is happening, fake Edgar follows the cat and its owner around, killing the old man just to get a hold of the rather aggressive and uninterested kitten. Still, he doesn't get a hold of it. Again, we'll return to this bit in just a second. Agent K and Edwards decide to pay the lady a visit, revealing that it's Edgar's wife, if you hadn't caught on just yet. They ask her about what she witnessed and retells the full story of the spaceship landing on the truck and Edgar acting strange. It's like something that's wearing air, like a, like a suit, an Edgar suit. The missus then explains how Edgar was a big old meanie and that he didn't treat her right. Having already gotten the information they needed from her, the man in black beam their flashy red thing and fabricate a whole story to make her a little happier about her husband's sudden change and departure. You kicked him out. And now that he's gone, you're gonna go in town, you go to Bloomingdale's, you find yourself some nice dresses, get yourself some shoes. Well, that's mighty kind of him. The man in black leave the house as Agent K pieces together what's going on. As it turns out, the thing that's currently wearing the Edgar suit is some sort of roach with unlimited strength, roaming around Earth unsupervised. Doesn't sound like fun, huh? And now they have to figure out how to attack it. I knew exactly what to do, but in a 
much more real sense I had no idea what to do. Later, the agents head on over to the morgue where they discover the cat's owner's lifeless body, accompanied by the cat, who is still alive. Oh, thank God. The mortician explains that the corpse is missing all of its organs and it looks like a mysterious death. Well, that much is clear. The corpse then opens some sort of chambers that reveals a tiny alien that appears to be dying alongside its human suit. Before passing away to another dimension, the little guy gives some clues about who killed him and why. You see, there's a hidden galaxy, Orion's Belt, that needs some protecting in order to prevent war among the planets. To prevent war, the galaxy is on Orion's belt. What the hell does that mean? I guess we're on the same page there, buddy. Seeing as the mortician also witnessed some alien activity, Agent K also beams the red flashy thingy at the lady. <laughs> I feel like they might be overusing it a little, don't you? Back at the agency, Agent K decides to stalk the woman that used to be his wife on his past life, looking back at her with fondness and clear nostalgia. Edwards is quick to interrupt his little stalking session as they try to figure out what the alien was trying to say. Are you, are you some kind of expert on all things extraterrestrial now? Look. To make matters worse, the man Edgar killed was an Archelian alien prince. We're not sure what that means either. And they're holding the man in black responsible for his death. Before they can bump their heads together and try and come up with something, there is some more illegal alien activity they have to get to. As you can imagine, it's our little friend Edgar wrecking havoc around town. As the agents try to subdue him, Edwards is a little bit too impulsive with his alien gun and uses it without caring how many people watch, which of course lands him a scolding from Agent K. There's always an alien battle cruiser or a Karelian death ray or an intergalactic plague that's about to wipe out life on this miserable little planet. What a happy little thought. Oh, and fake Edgar got away, if it wasn't obvious. Agent K and Edwards decide to head on over and talk to one of the R. Killian's informants, trying to spot him around the block. Now that's the worst disguise ever. That guy's definitely an alien. You don't like it? You can kiss my furry little butt. Well, that was easier than anticipated at least. The pug explains that if the roaches get a hold of the galaxy, the Earth may be unwillingly compromised and the Archelians will lose their well-kept galaxy. He explains that the galaxy is actually an Earth and it's the size of a marble or just a very small piece of jewelry. And right in this segment, Edwards has his light bulb moment. So, remember how Edgar was chasing after some cat? Well, that cat's name just happens to be Orion and is wearing a color with one particular piece of jewelry, if you will. And that's when Edwards puts two and two together and finds that Orion is actually the tiny guy's cat and is holding the galaxy. Oh, I get it! Agent K and Edwards return to the morgue where the cat used to be but unfortunately for them, fake Edgar is one step ahead of them and has the tiny marble galaxy in his possession. He holds the mortician at gunpoint the second the agents arrive as he hides underneath a strainer. Edwards finds him sooner rather than later and Edgar decides to jump out of a window alongside the mortician. Well, that's just great. After quite some time chasing Edgar around and discovering some other well-kept Earth secrets. You do know Elvis is dead, right? No, Elvis is not dead. He just went home. The agents finally catch up to fake Edgar in hopes of scaring them into submission. Fake Edgar removes his Edgar suit and reveals his true roach form. That did not go at all the way I planned. That would have me running in a heartbeat. The agents fight for several minutes with a humongous roach until they finally beat it down, recovering the Arcalian galaxy and saving Earth. Yay! But no, it isn't over just yet. You see, during this chase and fighting sequence, Agent K has decided that being a man in black just isn't in the cards for him anymore and asks Edward to beam the red flashy thingy and erase his memory. Although he doesn't want to at first, Edward abides to his request. Sometime later, it's revealed that Agent K has awakened from a coma and is reunited with his wife, while Edwards is walking the streets of New York with his brand new partner, the mortician. 
Well, that doesn't sound half bad to be honest. And that's all for today. Make sure to stay tuned as we'll be doing Man in Black 2 very soon. For now, let us know in the comments what you thought of this movie. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. See you next time!